In this video, I'm going to introduce the volume builder. So I have a sphere here, uh, just a plain old sphere. It's not editable or anything. I'm going to come over to this drop-down menu here and choose volume builder. Put the uh, sphere as a child of the volume builder. So what the heck happened? Uh, now the um, sphere is being represented by what are called voxels, okay, V-O-X-E-L-S, voxels. Think of it as the analogous to um, a two-dimensional pixel. Okay, so if you have a JPEG, it's made up of pixels. A three-dimensional object can be made up of voxels, which are tiny little cubes. Okay, the three-dimensional cubes that hold all the data for the object. And what we're looking at here is, um, you know, it's the sphere is being represented by many, many little cubes. Only the surface that is facing us is being presented on the screen. That's to save, you know, RAM and, uh, you know, processor overhead instead of rendering every little cube. And you know, why would we want to do this is, I'll explain later, whenever we combine objects under a volume builder, um, it gives us a lot of options in our modeling and it makes stuff look a lot nicer, but we'll get there, okay? All right, so um, sphere represented by a whole bunch of cubes. All right, so if I click on volume builder, it has attributes. And volume type, just leave it at uh, signed uh, distance field for now. Voxel size is the only attribute you'll be concerned about at this point. So it defaults to 10 centimeters, meaning that the cubes, uh, the whole bunch of cubes that are building up to make this sphere are 10 by 10 by 10. So if I increase this number, like to 30, uh, now the cubes are 30 by 30 by 30 to make up this cube, to make up the sphere, and it's starting to lose resolution. Okay, so the smaller the little box, the voxel, the smaller the vox, voxel, the higher the resolution. So let me turn this, uh, let me make the little boxes five by five by five, and you get something that's more spherical. And again, you're wondering why would I want to do this? Stick with me. Uh, in a minute here, I'm going to show you why. All right, but one thing before I demo how this is something that's really, really cool, I want to point out that we cannot render a voxel. Okay, so if I hit try to render this thing that's all I get now to make it so I can see this object I have to add a volume measure okay so volume measure click hold and drag the whole thing volume builder and the sphere into the volume measure and now this is a uh, now I can see the mesh which by the way is made up of quads um, the polygons are, are quads, which is really cool. And now this can be rendered. All right. Now, again, you're wondering why. Why, why do we want to do this? Okay, so let me go to this other object or setup I made here. Real simple. Um, I got this you know, flat rectangular object, which is editable, which was a cube, and um, just two two cylinders, you know, nothing, nothing fancy. Okay, the two cylinders projecting through this flat object. Let me make a um, volume builder. So here's the hierarchy if you want to follow along at home, this cube, cylinder, cylinder. I'm going to grab all that stuff and put it in the volume builder. And of course, we get our, you know, um, pixelated representation of this thing made up of cubes. So let me click on Volume Builder, and again, like I did with the sphere, uh, right away, increase the resolution by making the size of the voxels five by five by five. And remember, they're just tiny little cubes, right? Okay, now let's make a volume measure and drag the whole thing into the volume measure. And now I can finally talk about just exactly what is going on here and why would I want to do this? 
Okay, so if I just hit a quick render, you can see that there's it's much more organic uh, the way the pieces and parts come together. So you know, yes, sometimes if you're if you're like modeling like a steel two pieces of you know some machinery, you might one of those want to have the sharp edges. But like if you were modeling either an organic object. Uh, or like even a like something that was injection molded, um, you know, like any anything any kind of plastic object, and there's bunches and bunches of them. You know, the way these uh, the objects join together looks much much more natural. All right, and but we can you know we can control like the the smoothness and everything else here. So let's take a look at the attributes that we got going on here. Uh, if I click on Volume Builder and I have the three objects, that hierarchy is mimicked down here in this pane. And I can like move these, um, you know, I could, I could change the hierarchy of these if I wanted to. Now, the except for this like, you know, so-called, it's not really called a base layer, but that's what I'm thinking of it as, uh, this is, kind of sort of but not really analogous to Photoshop layers where you have like a layer at the bottom and this isn't really a layer so I'm probably confusing the heck out of everybody but but anyway anything uh, in this hierarchy anything above has these modes uh, available to them the base layer doesn't and it's not really a layer it just just, just bear with me <laughs> so, but anyway um, so let's let's check out what the heck are these modes okay so here is the cube which is this flat object here and it's at union and as we can guess you know union means stick stuff together right um, now if I hit the drop down menu I've got some choices subtract or intersect so let's choose subtract and what it does is it subtracts that flat object you know that that editable cube and leaves everything else so, and this is just like the you know the bullion uh the bull pardon me bull object that we've used earlier in this course now over here at the modes if i hit um, the drop down menu and choose intersect only the stuff that intersects with the cylinders is visible all right, so that's what's going on with the modes. Now in this setup, this the mode of this cylinder doesn't really matter all that much. So, I'm, but I think you get the idea that um, since we've worked with the bool object, uh, this this should ring some bells. Okay, like the the way subtract, union, and intersect work is very much analogous to how the bool um, object works. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, but wait, there's more. Okay, so anyway, let, let's take a gander at these cylinders. Um, and let's just hit the... Okay, so they're kind of like bumpy, right? Um, and weird looking. And so like we can choose uh, SDF Smooth, right? Now that's what happens so let's take a look at the hierarchy so like anything underneath this SDF smooth has become smoothed out so I could if I wanted to if I just wanted like one cylinder more cylindrical and one smoother I could like click hold and drag and change the hierarchy so now only this dude over here whoops sorry I missed I, uh, only this guy over here is being effect, affected by this uh, smooth attribute. So if I click on smooth, the um, the strength will default to 100%, and I can you know decrease that uh, smoothing strength, you know to get something like this, right? So the um, anyway, so that that's the. If Volume Builder is selected, you have the option uh, to add this smooth filter, okay, to, to any one of these. 
Um, and that's, let me just hit a quick render here. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover uh, in this video. So I guess uh, in, in summation, as they say in the biz, um, you can have multiple objects either, either editable or primitive, you know, in a hierarchy under a volume builder. You have to have uh, everything under a volume measure in order to render it. And um, within the, the volume builder attributes, uh, voxel size will, the smaller the number, the, the better the resolution. And the hierarchy under here, you can move the objects here, but you can add a smooth filter to smooth out any, any or all of the objects and you can uh, adjust the strength of the smooth filter here.